Welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Chat Show. This 30-minute webinar is live on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And your comments and questions via these platforms are most welcome. Please keep them kind and respectful. Following this event, you are welcome to join us via the Blue Jeans online conferencing app for a one-hour NASA-accredited workshop with our guest presenter. Now, here's your host, Dr. Tim Kitchen. Well, thank you very much, Rob, and welcome to the Inject Creativity live chat show being recorded via a range of social media platforms, including LinkedIn. I can officially say that because it worked last week. And we are recording this on Wednesday, the 12th of August, 2020. I'm your host, Tim Kitchen, Adobe's Senior Education Specialist for the Asia Pacific region. Before I introduce my amazing co-host, I'd like to do an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander elders, past, present and future, as well as Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first peoples in our lands, the first scientists and the first creatives, and we commit to building a brighter future together. Let's introduce our amazing co-host, Erin Rathke from TAFE Queensland. Hi, Erin. How are you? Hi, everyone. How are you, Tim? Going all right. We are still in lockdown. We'll be for a while, but that's okay. I get to walk my dog occasionally as long as I'm wearing a mask. Yes, and as long as your dog doesn't have to wear a mask as well. I've seen some pretty cute photos, though, of people getting inventive and creative with their quarantine exercise time in Victoria, and good on everybody for trying to find something positive in all of this very serious business. Yeah, it is. And I was kind of hoping to report to you hashtag five in a row. Yeah. Didn't work. Oh, the, the foot. Yes, football. Yes, mm. I know football things. Mm. Yep. <laughs> Well, so obviously it didn't turn out so well. No, and I was running a webinar. So I think that's the reason I was actually running a webinar when the Saints were playing on Monday night. So I wasn't there to support them and I kind of oh. let them down. It's kind of like the superstition thing where people have like their lucky socks that they wear during games and stuff, right? Like if you're not there to like channel your energy, it doesn't come <laughs> exactly. off. Hey, um, I've got some exciting news though uh, on a more serious note. These, these shows are now actually being broadcast out to the Adobe in Education YouTube channel, the official Adobe in Education YouTube channel. So it's it's great to know we're getting that recognition from this show. So well done to you and to everyone who's been involved in these productions. And of course, this is number 25. Yeah. Does and that deserve so a round of applause? I am I yes, I think it does. <laughs> 25 shows, we've done well. So it's a bit of a milestone. So thank you, Erin, and thank you, Jerry, and everyone behind the scenes who's helped to put this together. It's a great show, and I've really been enjoying doing it. I think I've been here for most of them, so it doesn't feel like 25. There you go. Good. So tell us what's happening today. Well, um, to, I'm looking forward to introducing everyone to our special guest for this episode. So today, tonight, I should say, we've got Adrian Brook from SAE Creative Institute in Melbourne, as well as education consultant Paul McLean from Rare Innovations in Auckland, New Zealand. And we'll be meeting and finding out more about Adrian and Paul very soon. As usual, helping us moderate and doing a lot of the techie things behind the scenes is my wonderful colleague, Adobe Customer Success Manager, Jerry Wong. Hi, Jerry. Hi, everyone. Good evening, and uh, Hi, great to be on board. Good. It's good to have you with us, Jerry. And of course, Jerry will be monitoring the chat, and he'll be bringing up your chats. And please do chat away. And uh, I think we've got a slight issue with the chats at the moment. We'll notice that we're actually getting a chat feed from uh, Facebook and YouTube. I'm just doing a check now, actually, to have a look. Definitely on Facebook and YouTube. And LinkedIn. And LinkedIn. And LinkedIn. Oh, yes. Here. yes. Oh, that's cool. We can see uh, some LinkedIn. That's the first time we've had LinkedIn actually working properly for us. Thank you, Blandina. Terrific. Oh, that's wonderful. And uh, 
and a few others who are coming in now. But if you're on Twitter and you want to join the chat and if you want to actually contribute, you might need to jump over to LinkedIn or Facebook. Uh, Facebook's a closed group, so you'll need to join that, which I can't accept you now because I'm presenting the show, but um, maybe later on. Uh, certainly through YouTube, you can do that as well, which would be great. And we'll be continuing the chat for anybody when we move over to the Blue Jeans room. So, Jerry, just bring up the link to the Blue Jeans to warn everyone well in advance. In about 25 minutes' time, we move to bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe for our deeper dive show after this chat show. And remember, the more you contribute, the more interactive these sessions become. We really do value all of your comments and thoughts that you pop into the chat, and especially when you move across into the deeper dive, so get involved. Erin, what's our Spark Challenge for this week? Well, for this week, the Spark Challenge is going to be creating a Spark post based on something you learn during the chat show or the Deep Advive event that you can apply in your classroom. So this Spark post should feature text and images and be shared in the Blue Jeans chat during the Deep Dive event. And I'm going to share my screen and, and just show you, for those of you who are new to Spark, I'm just jumping into my screen now. It looks a bit weird at the moment, but it'll look better in a sec. Hopefully, there we go. So I'm in a Google Chrome browser. Uh, I just find Chrome works better for Spark than any of the other browsers. All the features are available to you. And, oh, we've got some background noise there. Jerry, would you mind jumping to... Blue jeans. I might just check to make sure that we are. I'm just my audio was on accidentally, so now that's better. We don't have any interruptions. Now I'm in. I'm in the um, the Google Chrome room, and I'm going to jump into Spark. Spark.adobe.com. And for those of you who have never used it before, if you're part of an enterprise agreement with Adobe, you can jump into your login with your school account, and that works beautifully. If you are um, not if you're not really sure, you can log in with Google, Facebook, Apple, or your Adobe ID. I'm going to jump in with my school ID, uh, which is also a company ID. And any second now, we'll see the Adobe Federated ID system. You will see your school Federated ID system, hopefully, if you've got an account. I'll just quickly sign in. I've got to do a second level of authentication, which is now going through to my phone to give you time to log in. There we go, just verifying that. And yes, that is me. So any second now, we'll be jumping into Spark. Many of you have used Spark before. I did a whole workshop on Spark today with um, a whole lot of Monash students, actually, Monash pre-service teachers. And they were, um, they were amazed at just how flexible it is. In the top left-hand corner, that little plus symbol allows you access to a whole range of different products that you can create. You can see the Instagram stories, the Facebook posts, collages, and down below the branded graphics and custom size graphics. They're all Spark post. They all relate to today's challenge, tonight's challenge. Spark uh, page is web page and Spark video is the video option. I'm gonna just go straight to Flyer, which is Spark post and it'll create a nice A4 sized stage for me to bring in any photos. I could go to the ad on the top right hand corner and I could bring in um, any photos. If I go to photo, you can see I can upload any image that I've got. I could do a screen grab and then just grab that image and bring it into my poster about something that I've really enjoyed that I can apply for to that show. Or I could go to find free photos and do a search for any of the amazing um, images that are on Unsplash and Pixabay. Let's go into my favourite one. Yeah, I love Unsplash because it has lots of, uh, one of the criteria for Unsplash is that the photos are very naturalistic, whereas Pixabay has a lot of free photos that are available for you to select from that have like a bit more digital manipulation. So they have lots of like Cody stuff and very cool, very highly stylized images for you to select from. Oh, that's good. I didn't realise the distinction. Thank you, Erin. Yeah. That's great. We can pin it to the background so it becomes the full background or I could just have it move freely around the stage and there it is moving freely now around the stage. I can scale it bigger or smaller. I can then go in and add some text. And in the full version, you've got all these templates that you can work with as well. In the free version, you just add text and away you go. Uh, once you've finished your poster, go up to the top right-hand corner where it says share. You could download it as a JPEG, a PNG, or even a PDF document if you're using the Chrome browser. 
but what I'd like you to do for the challenge for tonight is to go to share and publish. And when you publish it, it'll generate a link. And that link, if you click the link button, notice we can go into Google Classrooms and Microsoft Teams. The Teams one's only come up recently as our new partnership with, with Microsoft have allowed that to happen, which is great. Thank you, Microsoft. And we click on the link and I can copy that link, jump into the, because it'll be the Blue Jeans environment where, then, where you'll be posting this, jump into the chat in the Blue Jeans environment, paste it in the chat, then we can all see your poster. So that's what we're looking forward to seeing with your with your uh, Spark challenge for tonight. So I'll just stop sharing there and hand it over to Erin. Yeah, fantastic. So Adobe's partners, uh, sorry, Adobe partnership with Digital Learning and Teaching Victoria, DLTV, for a number of events during this year. They are a very active teacher professional organisation for Victorian K-12 teachers. So last week they published their latest journal and due to COVID, they're providing it to educators as a free resource focused on remote learning. So take special note of the article on pages 16 to 19. There are lots of great tips in there from our very own Dr. Tim Kitchen. What can I say? <laughs> That's good. Actually, I've got a, a close connection with um, DLTV. Just go back a slide, if you wouldn't mind, Jerry, just to that DLTV slide. Uh, when I was teaching full time, I was also the vice president of VITA, Victorian Information Technology Teachers Association. And then there was a second teachers association too called ICTIV at the time. And I didn't understand why there were two in Victoria that did pretty much the same sorts of things. And mm -hmm. so we worked hard at merging them and we created DLTV, Digital Learning Teaching Victoria, which is an affiliate with the Australian Council of Computers and Education. And it's a great organisation. Every state has their own version of that that are affiliated with the Australian Council of Computers and Education. So get to know your one. If you're a K-12 teacher, get to know your state's group. If it's Queensland, it's QSight, Queensland Society of Technology and Education. If it's... Um, New South Wales, it's it's ICTE New South Wales. And so all of those groups are well worth getting to know and get involved with them because that's that's how you give back. If you're a presenter, this is how I learnt to become a presenter. And I'm very grateful because I don't think I'd be doing what I'm doing now if I didn't have that background in, in working with those teacher professional associations. Now, let's... Um, Speaking of uh, good tips, I think uh, we were talking about just before, um, we've got article. some, that's it, we've got some great resources here on the Education Exchange, and this is a, a new section on the Adobe Distance Learning Resources that we'd like to highlight. It's called Go Paperless with Your Teaching. It features a resource hub for going paperless with the Adobe Document Cloud, a resource based on creating digital worksheets for your students and a lot more as well. So Erin, introduce us to our special guests for today. Thanks, Tim. It is my great pleasure to introduce Adrian Brooke and Paul McLean. So Adrian has been teaching me for many years in both K-12 and higher ed. He's currently the Department Coordinator for Animation, Games and Design at the amazing SAE Creative Institute in Melbourne. Welcome, Adrian. Well, let's bring Adrian up there so we can say hello. How are you, sir? Hello, thank you very much. I've enjoyed so far. I'm oh, hope everyone will still stay on and enjoy whatever we say. I'm sure. I'm sure. So um, joining us and Adrian tonight is Paul. He's an education consultant in New Zealand, a regular to the show and head of Rare Innovations. Welcome, Paul McLean. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Looking forward to the chat this evening. Thank you. Lovely. So um, I guess we'll just jump straight into the question. So Adrian, what are you going to be sharing with us during the Deeper Dive event this evening? Well, I thought we'd use the pen tool. The pen tool is an early tool of, of Illustrator, but it's now incorporated in InDesign and Photoshop, and it seems quite complicated, but it can be really simple. So I'm going to show some simple ways to control it and build from that. I'm really yeah. looking forward to that because I've been dipping my toe into using the pen tool in Illustrator is a new thing for me. I've got a, a snazzy stylus and and things now. And yeah, it's once you get a flow, it's really easy, but just getting that flow is... It's very, it can be extremely complicated and powerful. I'm going to make it really simple. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. 
Oh, hello, Sarita from India. She's saying hello, oh. and she loves Adobe. That's nice. Thank you for joining That's us, Sarita. Great. It's great. And Paul, what will you be sharing with us during the deeper dive event later on? And I'm looking forward to this one. Um, it's uh, basically the topic is assessing the creative state in schools, how oh. to get the conversation started, and uh, and how I approach it with a number of organisations. Great. Oh, looking forward to that. That's going to be great. Creativity, it's such an important concept and something that's become more and more important, not just in education, but in corporate life as well. And um, we know some of the research that's come out of the World Economic Forum over the last 15 years, rating creativity right up there in not just the top 10 most important skills to thrive in the future, but now in the top three most important skills. Adrian, why is creativity so important? Well, to me, creativity is inventiveness. And we, as educators, we actually are inventive. We, we, we uh, people that we, we have a lesson, we take a lesson, we've prepared for it. It doesn't go the way we think it would go. Um, but as educators, we don't give up. We go, okay, let me have a look and see where it didn't work. What can I try differently? Is it going to be my delivery? Is it going to be the variety of material for content that I provided? Uh, all of those things. And that's creativity. That's, that is the ability to say, okay, let me look at what I've done. Let me analyze it. Let me try something else. Um, and an Australian and a New Zealand is uh, high up there in terms of inventiveness. Of, of being willing to have a go, but also to just try and do. So mm. that's sort of why I think it is, you know, we never, as teachers, we don't shrug off the challenge. We know that a teaching and, and, and learning is dependent on the synergy between us. Oh, and of course, Sir Ken Robinson talks about it as being a process. It's not just a thing. It, it is actually, you do have to do something to mm. be creative. And that's, you know, important. It's not just um, imagination is not creativity, but actually creating something or doing something based around that imagination. That's when you start hitting that world. Yeah, and, it's wonderful. Uh, isn't it? You actualize something that didn't exist and you make it exist, even if it is just, just digitally. It's something that started in your head that can be distributed around the world through this medium of internet. Um, yeah. Paul, what would you say um, when parents and some teachers argue that creativity isn't as important as teaching the basics of numeracy and literacy? Great question. I think actually, I think that hits the nail on the head in terms of driving change in schools, getting the parents on board and actually addressing that question is probably the, the greatest way to create a revolution in education, getting the parents on board and demanding, and this is the answer, um, you know, inventiveness and systems thinking, design thinking, critical thinking, and a new learner experience that really helps shape their offspring uh, for the future. Um, if we can do that, then um, it, it'll, it's another force uh, to be reckoned with in terms of driving change. You can also say, you know, economically, that creativity is, is even become more important. You know, uh, manufacturing is going down and, and mining is reducing, but creativity never stops and it's increasing and it's our value. So that's a, a, a thing to think about too, that it is the 21st century employment guarantee it. Yeah, and that's why it's being rated so highly in the research through the World Economic Forum. They They don't they're not Adobe. They're not just sort of like a creative industry. We're talking about politicians here. We're talking about mm. economic leaders, business leaders around the world that get together. And then when they do their research, in the most recent study, it was a combination with Microsoft and LinkedIn, where they looked at what is the most searched term on LinkedIn. Now, think about this. When we're employing people in industry, we go to LinkedIn. It's the number one place you go to when you're looking for talent. And so when we as employers are looking for people to go into our businesses, what's the most searched term? The word creative. And that is a message that really needs to get down to schools because it just shows you how important it is out there in the corporate world. Mm. Totally it's, yeah, it's, it's not, it isn't just about, you know, making graphics or making a uh, um, an object which can be distributed. It's also about creative problem solving. Like if there is an issue that everyone has tried to think around and have approached it at different angles, if you're the one person that can get it at the angle that 
provides the exact information to create that solution, then, you know, your gravy as far as your employability goes, because they don't just want, you know, run of the mill drones, they want people who will give them more bang for their buck as far as employability goes. Yeah, true. Hey, we'd love to get some responses from the people who are watching this out there. So if you want to share a question, if you would like to share a comment, do you agree with us? Do you disagree with us? What um, what would you like to share? So go ahead and put it in and then Jerry's going to keep monitoring that and then throw them in as part of the discussion. You've got two amazing experts here. One of them from New Zealand, education consultant, educator, and is dealing with creativity in all sorts of different levels. And you've got another one who's been around for 350 years. No, sorry. How long have you been? Oh, I apologise. <laughs> he's been around for a long time. And he's uh, been a teacher in both K-12 higher ed and now at um, SAE. Uh, working at the highest level with with at the highest level of creativity as the head of animation getting students ready for the film industry getting students ready for the audio industry so you've got a wealth of experience here to ask questions and comments with I, I was doing some research and I, and I was quite surprised the creative industries in 2013 was employing 600,000 people directly and indirectly mm -hmm. and in 2018 how many people do you think the mining industry was employing? 130,000. Wow. So a quarter of it. And yet we're the mining is seen as being the thing that we all got to invest in. Whereas creatives, we don't run out of resources. Well, and I think that's the thing is that um, the thinking of um, being very, like more highly valuing something that's incredibly tangible and physical is very like natural. Like we we have created, a, well, Christ, you shouldn't use that word. We have um, actualized an incredibly creative world. We are making changes to our natural environment based on concepts and creativity that we're, you know, not even, you know, basically science fiction before science fiction was even a word a hundred years ago um, or even 50 years ago imagining you know iPhones and what we actually are capable of doing with those apps I mean it makes sense for people to be drawn to things that they can touch and feel and taste and smell but creativity enables those things to be made real in that very tangible way like a coal or logging or you know more traditional i guess industries and if you go to new zealand you'll go to visit weta you'll go and see the hobbits and all that stuff which is amazing isn't it paul oh it is i think the um the, the challenge we've got at the moment is, is hitting this discussion right on on the nail in so far as we've got it um you know the movie industry and and the, those opportunities but um you know we're, we're, we're a set of islands um you know quite a distance away we've got dairy and tourism tourism is a little bit challenged at the moment um we have to come up with something a little bit different to to export it in the creative zone but to do that we've got to develop young people who can actually recognize what the world opportunities are and I've, i do a lot of discussion around what is systems thinking how can they get an appreciation of the the complex uh, societal factors around us at the moment and how can they actually disrupt from this remote place and apply and create and deliver solutions articulate the proposition be motivated to do it go into the uh, industry and university equipped to actually do that as a, as a package concern and that's the type of thing that uh, we need to do in new zealand urgently really and um that's that's what i'm i'm mo motivated personally to get involved in there's an interesting couple of comments here. Sorry, Aaron. Just Mark Finlayson from New South Wales has said, sadly, many of the people in higher positions of responsibility in schools don't understand creativity. Many are actively scared by it after 37 years of teaching. No, Mark, you're not that old. Seriously, I have seen this year after year. My biggest issue is as a leader of creative arts in a high school is fighting against these prejudices. And then when you match that with what this Facebook user, I'm not sure we haven't got a person here just this year my school is prioritizing how to ensure how we are engaging with critical and creative thinking the general capabilities of the Australian curriculum I don't know if you're aware of this folks but when the national or I should, should say the Australian curriculum deliberately put in critical and creative thinking as one of their key capabilities one of their general capabilities I should say it became one of the first official curriculum policies in the world to actually highlight creativity 
as a formal part of being part of the curriculum, which was awesome. We, we led the world with it. And it's great to see that schools are now taking that seriously and engaging yeah. with it, um, but frustrating to see what's happening in New South Wales uh, mm. there. And I think it's also incredibly important to note that creativity, especially, you know, using Weta as an example, people that work in the movie industry, whether it's practical or special effects, they need a grounding in practical experience in the real world. They need to know what timber looks like. They need to know how dust moves through an empty field. They need to have those frames of reference. So as creativity is really grounded in a good exposure to the world and how it works because everyone can pick up when things are put before them that don't look right and that wonderful you know there it isn't one or the other practical the practical in engages and enhances the creative there is there is no like true dichotomy they are completely intertwined Folks, great discussion. We're going to continue this discussion in the Deeper Dive event as Adrian presents and when, more specifically when Paul talks about his strategies and how he's dealing with this. Thank you so much for the chat show. At this point, we've only got about four minutes before we jump into the Deeper Dive event in the Blue Jeans room, but we have a few little announcements to make while we wait to do that. So, Erin, I'm going to get you to start those for us. Thank you. No worries. The Global Adobe in Education team recently launched the Adobe Creative Educators Program. And this is a program for all educators in all curriculum areas. You don't have to be an expert, an Adobe expert, to be in this program. So just hover your camera over the QR code displayed on screen or type the link to find out more about the one hour Creativity for All course on the Adobe Education Exchange. It's an entry requirement for the Adobe Creative Educators program. And we have time, I think, for a short video about the Creativity for All course, do we, Tim? Yeah, I might not play the whole thing, but this gives you a taster. Creativity is a vital and teachable skill for all our students. With the Adobe Creative Educator Program, start your professional learning journey to develop, nurture, and sustain creativity for the next generation. When you start the Creativity for All Level 1 course, you'll explore how to define creativity and recognize it in your students. You'll also learn from other creative educators and see examples of how they support creativity in their classes and courses around the world. And creativity is the driving force that is going to make any young person right now much more valuable after you complete this one hour course we are excited to welcome you into our adobe creative educator community here you can connect and share with a global community of creative educators and earn professional development badges along the way plus you'll have access to educational resources and events that are exclusive to our community start your journey today with the creativity for all course experience And we actually now have about four and a half thousand teachers who are part of that course and it only just opened wow. up three weeks ago, which is just amazing. Awesome. The 2020 APAC Adobe Education Summit is happening during the September holidays between September 29 and October 1. Make sure you register your interest to be involved via the link or the QR code on this slide if you haven't already. We'll be sharing more information about the summit during the Deeper Dive show. If you're on the face, if you are on Facebook and you are not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via the link shown on screen. I think it is, but it's www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash A-U-S-A-E-L. It's a great way to keep regularly involved with Adobe in education. Thank you very much, Erin, and thank you to Adrian and Paul and to Jerry for putting the chat show together for this week. Watch out for again on our official YouTube channel, and we're going to be jumping to the Deeper Dive event very soon. So have a look at the link down there. We've got jump into this Blue Jeans room for the Inject Creativity Deeper Dive show, it should be saying there, bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe, bluejeans.com slash kitchen at Adobe, and we'll be there in about 30 seconds. So thanks, folks. Thanks for another great show, and I look forward to seeing you in the Blue Jeans room very soon. All the best. Bye-bye. See you soon. Cheers.